A very warm welcome to the fifth film in our Roof Coverings series. In it, we look at what happens at the eaves, the line at which the roof meets or projects over an external wall. First, let's review the geometrical relationships between various components of a roof. The position of the eaves line is determined by the point at which the rafters of a rafter roof hit the ceiling joists. Assuming that the total thickness of the roof construction remains constant, the closer the rafter bearing point is to the external wall, the higher the eaves line. As a general rule, if the bearing point is pushed out as far out as possible to provide more standing room in the roof space, then the eaves line will no longer correspond to the floor height in the roof space. The position of the insulation is another factor that influences the height of the eaves. The total height of the roof structure, including insulation, is greater with on-roof insulation than when insulation is placed between the rafters. This means that assuming identically positioned rafters, fitting on-roof insulation pushes the edge of the roof further out, resulting in a higher eaves line. The height of the eaves also depends on whether or not the roof projects beyond the exterior wall. Where there is an overhang, the height of the eaves ceases to correspond to the line where the outer edges of the exterior wall and the roof intersect, but is determined by the depth of the roof projection. In some cases, this means that the eaves are almost level with the lintel of the windows below them, as shown in the right-hand photograph here. Where there is no overhang, the construction is also affected by the position of the gutter. Gutters are divided into three categories suspended, surface-mounted, and concealed gutters. The suspended gutter is the safest drainage option. Both surface-mounted and concealed gutters need the additional safeguard of a waterproof membrane fitted below them. Now, let's consider step-by-step -step an example of how we might design the eaves construction for a roof with on-roof insulation and a surface-mounted gutter. Here, we can see an exterior wall topped by a reinforcing ring beam on which the timber frame of the rafter roof rests. The space between the ceiling joists is brick-filled. A sheathing layer of wood composite boards is used to completely cover the rafters. A vapour retarder, such as a plastic roofing membrane with fully adhered seams, is then fixed to this sheathing to prevent uncontrolled vapour diffusion. The subsequent layers and components up to the sarking are fitted in one operation to make the roof weatherproof. Wooden timbers are laid on the sheathing in line with the rafters and the space between them is filled with insulation. At the eaves, the timbers are notched and an eaves board is fitted. A metal plate is fixed to the eaves board and another folded metal plate is suspended from it to protect the surface mounted gutter. The sarking and counter battens are then fixed to the timbers. The main battens and the tapered gutter board are fixed to the counter battens. The gutter is then attached to the gutter board by a bracket. The gap between the gutter itself and the metal plate below it allows air into the ventilation layer. The tiles are then laid on the main battens and the gutter board. Once the gutter has been connected to the downpipe, rainwater can be removed from the roof in a controlled manner. The double skin exterior wall cannot be finished until a functioning roof drainage system is in place to ensure that no water can penetrate the exterior wall insulation. The insulation is then fixed to the load-bearing skin and the facing skin can be built. Once the building shell is watertight, the interior fit-out can start. The interior walls are plastered and then painted and boards are laid over the wooden joists to provide a floor for what is a non-accessible or unused roof space. Summary. The wall and roof surfaces of a building meet at the eaves. The position of the eaves line is determined by the point at which the rafters of a rafter roof hit the ceiling joists. Assuming the total thickness of the roof construction is constant, the closer the rafter bearing point is to the external wall, the higher the eaves line. The height of the eaves line is significant irrespective of whether on-roof insulation or insulation between the rafters is chosen. Please take a look at the sixth film in our Roof Coverings series. In it, we explain how a tiled roof is finished at the verge.